Hello and welcome to the part 4 of the Critical Chain Scatterplot movies. Um, what's this all about? It's about the uh, portfolio for you in Critical Chain. It's called Scatterplot. Um, and how this Scatterplot reacts in different situations of uh, real world project management. Um, in part 1 I showed a single project, the fever curve and how it is defined in this Excel simulations. Um, in part 2 I showed already three projects fighting for resources and how critical chain works there. In part 3 that was already a little more interesting. Um, it was all about uh, how a already stabilized and, and well staggered portfolio reacts on an additional project. Um, how does it look like in the scatter plot? And the part 4 is even more interesting. It's all about how a screwed up broken portfolio can be repaired and how critical chain helps there. So let's have a look on the portfolio. It's a very simple portfolio. It's just four projects um, within different stages. Um, on, on a few of them there's already some work done. It's already finished some stages um, and that's uh, one thing they are started but they are started at the same time and that's already a, a break in critical chain rules. So the uh, uh, portfolio is already uh, screwed up a lot. Um, you see here it's it's not, not the colorful version. It's uh, You see the four projects of the portfolio. They have somehow a similar progress but uh, completely diff different buffer consumptions. One of them has already consumed all of its buffer, so it's black, red, yellow and green. So you have everything you want from a screwed up portfolio. Um, what's very, very common in such a portfolio is also the operational scheduling um, priority algorithm. Um, it's called random. So the one who gets the most attention at a day gets resources. Um, it's uh, not planned at all, it's just random. So just let's have a look what will happen. Um, the, the project will finish somehow in time, um, uh, but not at, in time at all. Let's have a look what the portfolio uh, so looks like. You see the, the, the points are moving somehow around and they will finish. Uh, but the green will get in red and, and all the others will get even more red. That is not stable, it's completely unstable um, and that's somehow clear because um, the constraint is uh, B with two resources um, and there are four projects. So uh, hmm. uh, now let's have a look what Critical Chain does with such a portfolio. So just switch over from random uh, operational priority to Critical Chain and it, it must be clear what happens. Um, in Critical Chain the worst projects get all the attention and the, the resources and the best, okay, it has to suffer a little. So um, if everything goes well, um, the portfolio stabilizes and the results are more predictable. Let's have a look. Oh, no. oh you already see how the, the points are moving um, together. And you see that the green project, yes, it's going uh, into the black in this case, but the worst one uh, is stable and gets done. That is a very predictable portfolio. Um, there's not a big variance in there. Um, but of course, it, you can't solve uh, the resource problem with doing this. Critical change just helps in this case to stabilize. So, hmm, um, what can be done to stabilize the portfolio even better? And the normal approach of management is, okay, you have four projects, we have to hire more people. That's, that's uh, Pavlov's uh, reflex. Um, it costs a little, but in the end it must help if you put more resources and if you give each project all resources they need, it must be a perfect world. So perhaps you can think on yourself what's happening. Um, let's have a look. I just switch here to a little more delay that you can 
see it a little better and now you see what's happening oh all the projects just moving to the right so yes you improved the situation the green project stays green fine uh, the yellow project gets into green perfect but the red stays in the red and the black stays in the black so yes you increased um, your capacity and you give each project an optimal resource level but in the end your portfolio is a mix and it's not reliable what happens so um, and even more you invested two additional resources so you increased uh, tremendously your uh, your operational expenses um, and now again um, how could critical chain help so we are going back when we are not um, adding here the resources we use the resource for something else we do not add four resources we just use one resource more so and this one is flexible that means nothing else that in the mean you have uh, not two persons working for work packages but three and that's nothing else then you can spend a little more on the most critical work package so and if you want to spend more than 50% uh, more you can increase this number to 200 I just explain it why not 50% plus because the scheduler uses this as borders um, and uh, chooses randomly something in between so if you would choose here 100 and 200 percent in the mean it's nothing else than 150 percent and that's nothing else than an one additional person so we have critical chain we have added just one person and now have a look what's happening you see the points are moving together and it's really really astonishing they are far much nearer um, the completion um, than before so you already see um, it's just seven percent uh, due date overrun with one additional person and the other example was uh, uh, four persons here it's three persons and if you do it with four persons that means nothing else than putting here a 300 let's have a look you really can stabilize your portfolio and that's critical chain critical chain is stabilizing um, so you can predict what's happening and with less resources than the classical project budget stuff and uh, team building stuff um, you can reach much better results all about uh, because uh, the flexibility and the closed loop corrective action and I think this uh, part 4 really shows the power of critical chain thank you very much bye bye